Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome back to another episode of the ByWord Show. I'm so glad you're here. If you would, just hit pause really quick. Would you take a screenshot of this episode, share it, tag us, let us know you were here. We love to see it. Today, we're going to have a fun episode. I've got Alyssa Murphy with us here today. She's a coach that's all about physical health meets emotional wellness. It's amazing. You guys are going to love this conversation. I honestly can't wait to dive into it. So Alyssa, would you mind just introducing yourself really quick? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Alyssa and I live in Redding, California. Um, I am a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for about eight years, seven, eight years now, which is so crazy to say. Um, And so I've been doing that. um, And yeah, and so coaching is like a very new thing for me, but I kind of went on my own little journey with emotional health and physical wellness. And so just here to chat about that and help other people on their journey. I love it so much. So would you share just a little bit about your journey? Like how did all of this come about? What got you interested in this? I would just love to hear all the things. Absolutely. So I would say I, I was always active growing up, but I would, I don't think I had any negatives belief negative beliefs um, about physical health, but I think I started realizing when I went through significant trauma and loss at 18 and 19, um, just the kind of like the connection and the correlation between the two. So I just noticed that my physical health started suffering when my emotional health wasn't doing very well. And so I I remember for Mm. about six years, I was not taking care of my body and I wasn't taking care of my heart, my mental health. And I feel like in that time, I started gaining weight. I developed not the best eating habits. I developed um, negative self-talk and um, just negative views on food and my body. And so I kind of Mm. just went on my own journey. I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, I just was like, I'm going to start small. And I think the biggest issue I had was with food. Um, and so I was like, I'm just going to figure this out and start small. Like, I'm not going to touch the working out yet. I'm just going to focus on the food. I also got into counseling um, and noticed kind of like as I was doing better emotionally, like I was doing better physically and um, and just kind of had a lot of breakthrough, especially in the last like year or two, um, really kind mm. of going after um just the connection between kind of realizing the connection between the two um, and just really feeling passionate yeah. about wanting to help other people with that, you know, because I just had so much breakthrough in my journey and yeah. I just feel like I'm thriving now. So that's amazing. Well, I think it's really interesting too, because you have background in the medical world. And so being mm-hmm. able to come at it from that angle, but also the emotional like counseling coaching side of things. It's just a really unique pairing. And I think it's something that's really awesome because I wish there were more conversations that blended the two together because I feel like it's either, I mean, I feel like there's more conversations where it's finally starting to make the connection, but growing up, at least for me and you guys who have been here know, I struggled with an eating disorder for a really long time, had a bunch of issues with that and body image growing up with food and all those things. But it was either for me, it was like, okay, go see a nutritionist, fix your diet, fix your eating, and then go see a counselor, work on your mindset, work on your emotional health. And so for me, it was, it felt like these very separate things. And so Mm -hmm. it's really cool to see how you have brought them together and you've even experienced it in your own journey. So what has your experience in the medical world done to help you make the connection between physical health and emotional health? I mean, I think just understanding the human body. And also too, just, I actually lived, um, with a really good friend of mine who has an autoimmune disorder. And, um, so Mm. kind of actually, I feel like my background in nursing kind of helped me look at her picture of health. And I was able to kind of see, wow, Mm. I'm noticing she's having a lot of autoimmune flare ups or she's having weight gain or maybe like breakouts or inflammation, something going on when she's going through a significant life event. And just kind of, I think Mm. having just that, that foundation and that baseline helped me maybe pick up on it. Um, and just watching, um, how her body body responded when she would eat certain foods. And, um, so I, yeah, cause like my background in nursing is more so like addiction medicine and, and that kind of thing and mental health. So I think I just had an idea of a picture of mental health, but I think when I paired it with 
food and Mm. um, physical health or, you know, autoimmune disorders, I was like, huh, okay, there's something, there's something to this. It's not, they're not like you were saying, like, they're not separated. They're not siloed. They are so connected, you know? Yes, definitely. And that's why I love that there's more talk about this holistic picture of health. And I think it's just been the missing link for a really long time. Um, Would you just explain kind of like what holistic health and wellness looks like for Mm -hmm. those who may not be familiar with that term? Yeah, no. So, I mean, health alone is multidimensional and holistic health essentially is the idea of the whole person. So what that encompasses is physical health, emotional health, mental, social, spiritual. And I think the way that I look at kind of the health and holistic health and wellness kind of paired together is wellness is taking those aspects of health and putting into action to create optimal health. That's so cool. Yeah. I really do feel like I wish I would have known more about this a long time ago in my journey Mm -hmm. with health and, and all the things that I struggle with along the way. But it's been so interesting now that I'm learning more about it to see how it really is all so connected. And it's helped me so much in my journey, even like you mentioned, healing from trauma, healing from sickness, healing from all of these things in my body that were just a lot more than what I was eating, my exercise routine, like all of that, like all came together. Mm -hmm. I could step back and look at, like you said, the whole person and see, okay, what are all the factors coming into play that are affecting a lot more areas than I thought they did in the first place. And so it's been really interesting figuring that out and learning myself along the way, and then just learning from other people's experience as well. So what would you say are some main things that you've learned on your journey or even some things that you wish you would have known in the beginning of this process? Oh my gosh, so much. I wish that I had a book on it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I feel, honestly, I, honestly, I feel like the biggest thing that I learned was self-compassion because it is that, it is just that, mm-hmm. it is a journey and it takes time. And I think I realized like the way that I, even when it came to like working out, right? I wasn't motivating myself the way that I would motivate a friend, right? So I would mm-hmm. I would be on the treadmill and be like, come on, like you need to run hard. You need to push yourself. Like we need to like get your legs into shape. We need to lose this weight. Or I'd be like, we need to do more abs because we have to get rid of this belly fat. And I'm like, if, man, if you were sitting in front of me working mm-hmm. out, I'm not going to say those things to you to motivate you. That's, that's right. That's going to do just the opposite. That, that's going to, that's going to create shame. And I mean, that wouldn't inspire me to keep mm. working out. I'd be, I'd be like, seriously, girl, like that's, that's like how you're speaking to me. So I think I just was like, no, I'm going to give myself yeah. compassion in those moments of like, Hey legs, thank you so much for being, for having the ability to run on this treadmill. Hey, Alyssa, I'm so proud of you for showing up at the gym today because I know that was really hard. Or, hey, Alyssa, I'm really Mm. proud of you for choosing a meal today that fuels your body, you know? Or even moments where I'm like, I'm going to go have an ice cream, you know? And I'm not going to feel bad about it because I wanted an ice cream and I'm not going to create shame or let shame dictate when I work out, how much I eat, all of these things, you know? And so I really feel like Mm. that. Um, once I, yeah, so I feel like self-compassion was really big and also having the self-awareness to recognize when I was, uh, doing that negative self-talk to myself, um, was pivotal Mm. for me. And I feel like it sounds so small, but it's had the greatest impact because your ears are listening to that. You're, you're then creating, uh, beliefs and frameworks around food or even saying things like, I'm going to have a cheat meal today. So then if you go have a burger, you look at it as a like burger and fries as a cheat meal as bad, you know? And so then you're slapping that label on it. So now you're building this kind of pathway in your brain of connecting burger bad. And so just like those little things really, really helped me. Man, that's so good. I've experienced that in my journey so much. And I'm so glad you Mm -hmm. mentioned it because it is a small thing, but it really makes such a huge difference because I remember for years and even after I had overcome my eating disorders, like just 
having those pathways in my brain. Like you mentioned, it's just this idea of food. This food's bad. This food's good. I was constantly measuring my day. Like, Oh, how good am I doing? How good am I looking? Like Mm -hmm. I need to push myself harder. And I had no compassion for myself at all. I was so critical of myself. I was so hard on myself. I viewed food as the enemy. I just was constantly in the state of distress because I was trying to reach this goal, like this state of perfection. Honestly, it was just totally unrealistic expectations that I had set for myself. And it was so exhausting and devastating to me because I never felt good enough. And it's really because I just didn't, I didn't love myself. I didn't love my body. I didn't know how to take care of myself. And I, I mean, I obviously learned so much in the journey, but I wasted so much time wishing I looked different, wishing that I had better control over my body with food and, and, you know, like could, could eat perfectly all the time. And it was just, it overcame, like it overtook my entire life. It was so overwhelming and I couldn't enjoy anything. And so Mm -hmm. I love that you pointed that out because really, I think if you guys heard the episode we had with Molly Mason in the beginning, she said something that I think about all the time. It's like, you cannot heal a body that you hate. Like I got to a point Mm, too, and this is even more recently. Yeah. Even more recently, I've gotten to a point where it's like, man, I'm a mom now. Wish I could lose all this weight, you know, and things like that, where I've had to catch myself and say, I'm so grateful for this body. I'm so grateful for what this body does for me. I'm so grateful that I have food to nourish my body. I'm so thankful for how far I've come. I'm so thankful, you know, Mm -hmm. changing my mindset, even on the days when I don't feel like it, I've just, I'm, I'm learning to catch myself too, because it really does make such a difference. And I feel like once you start to create those new habits and new thought patterns and new ways of speaking to yourself and about yourself and about your body and food, whatever, like it's, it is a journey, like you said, but it, it's those small tweaks along the way that I feel like makes such a big difference. You're so right. Well, absolutely. And even I have watched, you know, women walk through motherhood and even looking at their stretch marks and being like, my stretch marks tell a story. They, you know, tell a story of, Mm. I was given the greatest gift. Of a, of a child, of a baby. And it's loving, yes. it's like loving yourself in those moments of things that I think we deem as negative or we even judge other women for it. And it's like, no, we need to be lifting yeah. each other up and empowering each other, pe- empowering each other, you know? Yes. Yes. It's so true. And I read, um, what is it called? Breaking Free from Body Shame by Jess Connolly um, when it came out mm. a year or two ago. And in that book, she talks about similar things where it's like, my body is good. We're, we're not in a race in life. Like I'm never, it's not a race to have the best body, to be the prettiest, to be the whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just about like, this is my body. It's a good body. It's doing its job. I'm taking care of it. And that's all I need to do. It's like, mm-hmm. there's no prize for being the best. And there's not even a standard that says what the best is or what perfection even is. And so, yeah, you're so right. It's just, we get so caught up in that stuff so easily, all the comparison and whatever, Mm -hmm. um, that I'm glad we're having more conversations like this because it is something I feel like a lot of women talk about and it's so easy to forget that it does tell a story. Like our bodies tell a story and I'm reading the body keeps the score right now too. Mm -hmm. And just that whole thing of like, there's so much in our body more than just our physical health and wellness that's going on emotionally. And so Mm -hmm. the more I learn about that, it just amazes me. Um, So what are some things that you have seen get in the way? I mean, I know we've touched on a few, but what are some other things you've Mm -hmm. seen get in the way of women being able to really experience peak mental and emotional, physical, like holistic wellness? I feel like, well, I feel like we kind of like touch on it a bit, but yeah, I think comparison, I think we see, you know, we, maybe we want to go on this like fitness journey. Right. And, um, we're like, we're feeling inspired. And then we start following these like accounts, right. These like fitness models or these people that have, you know, don't have the same body type as us, <laughs> you know, we're working out yeah. their job. And I feel, I, I feel like the, the comparison kills the compassion that you have for yourself. And so then you feel defeated Mm. before you even step into the gym or before you, you know, start like the meal planning process of, you know, wanting to make maybe better choices that for with food that fuel your body. So I feel like comparison cuts us off before we even start the journey. We feel defeated Mm. and we're like, we kind of give up and we're like, what's the point? I also feel like, yeah, I also feel like another thing is we believe certain lies about ourselves, you know? 
like, um, Mm -hmm. or we take compliments or even things like, let's say I started like losing weight. Right. And I would have people like compliment me and, or like recognize like, Hey girl, like I noticed like your arms are getting toned. Like you look great. And I, because I didn't work on the emotional aspect, I only worked on the physical. I would flip mm. the compliments to fit the narrative that I had about myself. So one of wow. like my insecurities is I feel like my arms may be bigger, right? And so I'm like, well, you think my arms are toned now, but you probably thought they were fat before. And that's literally what I would tell myself. Mm. So then I would, you know, I would either get really into working out and really working my arms, or I'd be like, or I would just feel so much shame about it. And I would just mm. allow myself to believe that lie and um, just kind of like back off and feel defeated and like lose the motivation. Um, mm. I feel like another thing we really tend to focus on is the scale. Honestly, if I could tell people to throw away a scale, every scale <laughs> in the world, I would, because I feel like we focus way too much on the number <laughs> and we allow yeah. that to be what defines us. Um, I go based off of how I feel. I go based off of, um, I mean, my, I fluctuate three to five pounds alone on a, you know, on a daily basis. Mm. We retain water, you know, we have water weight yeah. and I don't like to step on scales. I don't do it. Um, I mean, I do do it, but I worked, I stepped <laughs> away from the scale when I knew I didn't have a healthy relationship with it. Mm, that's so good. And you mentioned too in there that you had done the work physically but you hadn't connected Mm -hmm. the emotional work. So what was that like? How did you Mm -hmm. actually start to connect the two and have them work together in your process? Yeah, I think it just started with really having, well, I think I did this cycle for a long time and I was like, this is so frustrating. I'm (laughs) yo-yoing and with my physical health (laughs) and I'm like, why this, I'm over this. Like I'm over this. And I think too, Mm -hmm. um, having a really solid community of women kind of calling me out and calling me higher or being one of my best friends was like, you know, you, there was one day, I think this was actually a pivotal point. I was like, I came home after being gone for like a week and I wasn't feeling good about my body, hadn't gone to the gym. And I was literally in my kitchen having a breakdown, crying, being like, I need to go to the gym, but I'm so exhausted. And she's like, Alyssa, girl, like, don't go to the gym then, you know, like, don't, you don't need to, Mm -hmm do that. Like you need to listen to your body. And so like, even like moments like that, I'm like, holy crap, I'm literally having a breakdown because I want to go to the gym because Mm -hmm. I don't feel good about my body yet. My body's telling me I'm tired and it needs rest. And so I think like, just like many moments like that, I'm like, okay, dang, I need to figure out something because I'm at my breaking point with yo-yoing between, you know, working out, not working out, feeling good about it, hating Mm -hmm. it. And so like I said, having little moments of changing those belief systems of being like, okay, I'm going to work out today because I, not because I hate my body, but because I love my body, you know, Mm -hmm. or I'm going to choose to have this meal because it fuels my body. I actually feel really good when I have this. Um, and so I think just having little, little moments and little kind of conversations with myself and treating myself as a friend um, really, really started helping me kind of connect the two and just like Mm -hmm. the little things here and there. And so then it's, you know, it just, it kind of was like a domino effect. I think that's just so cool. That mindset shift that you mentioned, I'm doing this not because I hate my body, not as a punishment, not because I feel shame or guilt or like I have to make up for something, but because I love my body. And in my Mm -hmm. journey, I've, I recognize that as truly the shift that made the difference for me too, because doing things because you hate your body is not sustainable. Like you said, it's not going to keep you motivated. You're always going to keep in that cycle of just doing it because of shame. And then you have to eat healthy and then you get burned out and you binge or you feel emotionally distressed or whatever. And so it's like this never ending trap where you just feel terrible about yourself all the time. And it's so miserable, but I feel like as soon as we start, and I'm talking baby steps, start just noticing what's good about our bodies and, and deciding, you know what, I'm going to do this to take care of myself. Even if it's a rest day, like resting is just as good and beneficial for our bodies as going to the gym 
or as eating a really nourishing meal. And I feel like when we talk about health from a holistic view, it really gives us a better understanding of how to listen to our body's needs. Because I feel like our body will tell us what we need if we just learn to listen, but it's a long process sometimes when we've been taught to listen to what other people are saying beauty looks like or bodies look like or what's healthy or comparing ourselves. And like, if that's what we're listening to, it's so loud that we can't hear what our body's actually telling us we need, whether it's something about food or something about emotional healing. And we just get caught up in these things that are drowning out (laughs) the thing we actually need the most. And so I love that you said that because when we're doing things based out of I love my body. I I want to care for myself well. That is the kind of motivation that will keep us moving on a process towards healing and growth and really good ways of taking care of ourselves and caring for our bodies and all of that. So thank you for mentioning that. I think that's just such a huge part of the puzzle. So would you kind of talk to us about like say somebody wants to start this process and they're like, okay, what do I do? Where do I begin? How do we actually start noticing what our body is saying and connecting these emotions so that we can start figuring out how to look at our health from a more holistic standpoint and then like taking steps forward? Yeah. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I think there's many different ways you could do it, but I think, um, taking it a day at a time. And so like waking up and realizing, like kind of doing like a check-in, like a self check-in, right. Of like, okay, Mm -hmm. What do I, like, what does my heart need and what does my body need today? What is my heart feeling and what is my body feeling today? So just doing those self check-ins. So like, let's say I wake up today and I'm like, Mm -hmm. dang, like I'm feeling tired, but I feel like I want to get my body moving. Right. So maybe I'm just going to go for a walk today. And, um, maybe then after that, I'm just going to go down to, you know, the juice bar and get like a protein shake or something like that. Or maybe I'm feeling, I'm just feeling high energy and I'm going to go work out today at the gym. And, um, I think, I think it's just starting small. Like I said, and just taking it day at a time. Um, but I think it's really to be able to connect the two, it's checking in with both. Um, and Mm. also to figure out where you're at emotionally. Like I know for me, I've, I started saying, I think the last like two years I'm like working out as a mental health thing for me. So I know for me Mm. when I'm feeling down, I actually need to go work out because it actually, it releases endorphins. I mean, even just physically speaking, like it releases releases endorphins and it's really good for you. Um, and so I know for me, like, I'm like, I'm feeling really sad today and I'm just going to go run on the treadmill and pump out some weights. And I usually leave being like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. So I think it's <laughs> just doing those things. Um, but I feel like that's also why I got into coaching just to help women figure out like, yeah, where do I start? Because it is such a load. It's such a big question. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. let's like figure out where you're at. Like, what are you believing? Where, what do you, what goals do you want to accomplish? And I think kind of starting to unpack that and helping people. unpack mm-hmm. that. Yeah, definitely. And I think again, at least in my experience, it kind of goes back to hearing all these different voices because like whenever I wanted to start learning about health and like what to do to actually take care of my body, what my body actually needs, I felt so Mm -hmm. overwhelmed by the amount of resources and the amount of people who are sharing things on the internet and telling you what to do. If you want to, if you want to look this way, feel this way, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, however way, like there's just a lot of people sharing a lot of things. And it was hard for me to figure out like, okay, what's actually for me. And so I love that you mentioned that just daily check-in. I feel like that's such a simple, practical thing. That's super Mm -hmm. sustainable and, and easy to do each day to like ask, what does my body need? What does my heart need? That is such a cool place to start. Cause I feel like from there you start to train yourself to recognize your needs. Cause I, I feel like when I was in the beginning of my journey towards healing, those things took time because I didn't really know what I needed and I didn't know what would help me, but just little things along the way, whether it was journaling, whether it was going on a walk, they really started to make a big difference because I was just giving myself some space to hear what I needed, what my heart, what my body needed. So that's really cool that you brought that up. 
I, okay, you've talked about this before and I wanted to hear more about this because I have, I am someone who um, has experienced some emotional eating. I don't know if that's anybody else out there, but I definitely have. And so <laughs> I know that's something that can be really hard to overcome. And I'm talking about like, I'm feeling sad. I'm going to eat an entire thing of Ben and Jerry's. Um, and so like, how do you, how do you help people through this? Like, is that a bad thing? Is that something that we need to like, what, what are your thoughts? Spill the tea on that. Spill the tea on emotional eating. I got you girl. Um, no, so, yeah. so emotional eating, I mean, essentially emotional eating is what we do when we're self soothing negative emotions. Right. So the thing is, is mm. you, when we emotionally eat, we're like, I'm, I know I mentioned it before creating kind of, kind of that pathway in our brain of, okay, I'm feeling sad. When I feel sad, I eat a pint of Ben and Jerry's, right? And so you start associating these emotions um, with with that food. And I mean, food that has like sugar and like all these things that do create certain, you know, hormones or chemicals to stir up in our body, which release good feeling things. And so we begin to associate, well, when I feel sad and I consume... Mm. Ben and Jerry's, I feel better. And so it's just, it's, it's, it's connecting all of that as, well, that's what I'm going to go to because I need comfort right now. I need love. Mm, I need, I need to feel better. And so I think it comes back to, I will say it again, self-awareness, um, and, um, Mm. identifying like, okay, I'm feeling sad. Okay. I'm recognizing that I'm feeling sad. Right. And being like, okay, what triggered my sadness? So identifying that trigger, right? Because emotional eating is we're getting triggered. We have an emotion come up and we want to do something about it. And um, so firstly, yes, identifying that trigger and being like, okay, I'm recognizing that I'm feeling sad. Why am I feeling sad? What happened? So before I do anything about it, I'm going to ask myself that question, right? And then kind of start Mm. unpacking that a bit and then being like, okay, I know I usually go to eating for this. Am I hungry? Or do, am I going to this because I need comfort? Okay. I'm recognizing I need comfort. Mm -hmm. What is another thing that gives me comfort and that makes me feel better? Um, and starting, starting to kind of like examine that. So even maybe like having like a go-to list of like, what are things that provide me comfort that are healthy and that um, that. don't, you know, um, so maybe like, it's like call a friend, go on a walk cuddle with my dog, watch a movie. Cause you want to be able to sometimes pull yourself out of that, out of that state, you know, and maybe start processing yeah. like with a friend, like I feel really sad right now. And I kind of just like need to talk about it. And so you start then going to things that are really just going to benefit you and create an optimal picture of health in your life. Right. So good. So what would you say are your like top tips for somebody who wants to get serious about taking better care of their health from a holistic angle? I feel like what was helpful for me was kind of getting people to go on this journey with me, right? So kind of like an accountability Mm -hmm. partner. It's like you are recognizing that you want to go on this holistic journey with emotional health and physical wellness. Well, girl, me too. Um, and just kind of having, I know I did that. I, I did that about a year and a half ago with one of my best friends were like, I kind of just want to start feeling better. <laughs> and so we were yeah. together and we kind of held each other accountable. And we also like did check-ins with it. Like I'm feeling tired today. Okay. I'm feeling tired today. Yeah, girl, I'm not, I don't want to go to the gym. I need to rest or, um, doing grocery shopping together, like with a friend, or I think just having mm-hmm. that, like that accountability partner, because it's way more fun to do it with people, you know, than by yourself. Yes. Like, I don't know. I'm such a, like a social butterfly. I'm like, I <laughs> hang out with my friends all the time. So we might as well like do health things together too. <laughs> Definitely a big one. Yeah. That's so good and helpful too. I feel like, especially if you're going to be going out to eat with friends, you're starting to make little changes. Yeah. It's like, it's nice to have some people in your corner to keep you accountable, uh, accountable or mm-hmm you know, whoever you live with, it's like, okay, I'm going to make some healthier meals or, you know, I'm going to have a rest day today and being more intentional about that. I feel like bringing people into the journey, bringing people into the process with you is so helpful. Um, Mm -hmm. so wow. I I've just loved all of this. Thank you so much. Is as we're wrapping up, is there anything that you would want to say to a woman who might just really be struggling on her health journey right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think I would just say you are not alone and I'm really Mm -hmm. sorry that you're struggling. Like that must be very hard and very frustrating, very difficult, but you are not in this alone. And there are people out there that, um, are feeling that way too, you know, and there are things that you can do and go after, um, just to feel better and to have a better relationship, um, with your health, with your emotional health, with your your physical health and with food. And your journey is just beginning and it doesn't end today. Um, and just take it a day at a time because you won't feel like this forever. I promise that you won't always feel like this. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just have compassion for yourself. Um, you got, and you got it. You got this girl. You can do it. (laughs) Yes. Well, I echo all of that. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your story and for what you're doing to help women, because this is a huge need, I feel like. So it's just really special and really cool to see the way that you're using your story and your journey to help so many other people. So with that being said, where can everybody connect with you and learn more from here? Yeah. So, um, I think hopefully you'll link my Instagram. Um, and then I also have a coaching website, um, and you can like book sessions with me on there in our session. Um, and I think we're going to also link the code, um, to be able to get, um, some money off on your first session and you get a 15 minute free consultation with me. So we can just like have a little girl chat and get to know each other a bit. Um, so Instagram and that website. Um, and yeah. Yes. Well, you guys, I will definitely be sure to link those for you. And that's so sweet of you to give a code to. So if anybody is interested in working with Alyssa, she's got just more and more goodness like this, tons of resources. So definitely go and check her out and follow along. But Alyssa, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate your story and your time and everything that you're doing. Absolutely. Girl, thanks for having me. I had fun. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into another episode of the Byword Show. I love having you here and I'm so thankful for your support. Don't forget to share a screenshot of this episode to let me know you were here. I can't wait to talk again soon, but in the meantime, be sure to come hang out with me on Instagram and remember, I am cheering you on.